Alright, making a video on the Amendum channel on physics. So I need to promote the physics channel, the draft science channel. Um, the last video I made, 20, seems like a nice round number. Might change the title. title I'll title this video something bold. Uh, Einstein was wrong. Uh, you know, something like that. Um, you know, because I do have to try to provoke. I have sent out some PMs and emails and whatnot to scientist types. Offering them bribes, um, you know, at least uh, it's, it's saying, look, tell me, what's your price? What does it cost for a day of your time? Um, <laughs> you know, because, yes, yeah, that, that, that's the only way this is going to get done, I suppose. So I have to try to force some real physicist um, to um, explain how it's possible that I'm wrong. Anyway, and that Einstein's right, by comparison. Um, so anyway, I figure I've rewritten some of this, so I'll just go through some of it. But the last video, the 20, it does explain a lot of it. Um, yeah, you know, there's, you know, it's really simple, but, you know, you do have to go through like a hundred steps to really get it. You know, there's all these little conditional things, you know, that you always have to attach to things. But anyway, let's just play with it and see where we go. Uh, the universe is made of two fundamental elements, a vast nothing and energetic quanta, energy, photons, really, so I'll put photons slash photons, moving the speed of light. So that's all there are. It's just two things. Well, I'll explain the photons in number two. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's nothing and then there's something. And the, at the real level of the universe, the only thing moving, the only thing acting, is photons. Nothing else is moving. Everything else is an illusion of photons. You're seeing photons. When you're seeing me, you're seeing photons. You're not seeing matter. There's no such thing as matter, technically. It's just photons. So in a sense, when you see a school of fish, what do you see? I mean, it blurs, and so it looks like a blob, maybe. But you know it's a school of fish. You know you're seeing fish, ultimately you're seeing fish. And when you see me, you're seeing the photons. Technically. I mean, the you know, even the light that's reflecting off of me is reflecting off of photons in electrons. And it's not really reflecting. It's having its angular momentum changed. The photons leaving me are different than the photons that bounced off of me. But the exchange was relatively free. Anyway, that's another subject. So, but just get the idea. So think about a school of fish, and all the fish move one speed, 30 miles an hour, nothing else. And they just get caught up in patterns. They move in patterns. And as long as they just move in patterns, they just kind of vibrate and can stay in one place. But if a few of them decide that that pattern, you know, a few widen that pattern in a direction, then the whole school will migrate in that direction. And that's what we see as movement. That's this. This is the photons, the schools of photons moving in a direction. And that movement is a different kind of thing than the, the absolute movement of photons. Quite obviously, it's not the speed of light. But from the photons' perspective, it is. They're still moving the speed of light. They're just moving the speed of light more in one direction, that way, than they are in any other direction. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, I call this from again postulates of absolute universality. There is no relativity. There's absolute uh, velocities. There's absolute space. There's the absolute speed of light. And uh, time dilation, as I've explained, is created because when when the school of fish is doing something, they're figure eighting. Let's say this fish inside the school, and they decide well, and they're pushed or they're motivated to move in a direction, then they're doing that figure eight in a direction. And that means they're consuming more space. They have to go more steps. And the fact that they're going more steps means, incidentally, that they can't do the figure eight as fast because they're moving the speed of light. They're going as fast as they can already. So something has to break. The pattern has to be slowed down, essentially. The pattern formation for them to move in a direction. And so that means the metabolism of atoms is slowed down uh, by velocity. 
by moving in a direction as a mass, as a school. So this is another thing to understand is school dynamics are different than fish dynamics. Not the same thing. They, they, they have to obey the same rules because it's all fish. But you need to understand that when you're talking about the momentum of a school of fish, it's different than the momentum of a photon. So the momentum of a photon is entirely uh, fixed. The only thing different is its direction. You can't change the speed of a photon, you can only change its direction. All right, photons can be considered a form of energetic quanta as they possess the fundamental native property of straight line momentum at the speed of light. So I'm just saying whether the photons are made of quanta or not. It doesn't really matter if quanta, photon, I think. I'm leaning towards the perception that photons are it. That's it. That's the quanta. Um, because I've sort of realized I don't need to parse them. I don't need to make photons. I don't need to make something smaller than a photon. Uh, I don't believe to make this all <clears throat> work. Nothing smaller than the fish making up the fish. Photons are it. But it's provisional and I don't need to make that statement to make this point. To prove Einstein wrong. I don't need to prove quanta. Anyway. All matter, or mass, is comprised entirely of energetic quanta trapped in circular, perhaps redundantly, perhaps perpetually redundant, patterns of light speed movement. So I'm using circular because <coughs> it seems to make sense. Uh, angular, you know, right angle turns would be difficult to manage in the geometry of atoms, let's say. Um, so it just makes sense to think about the idea that something's moving, the speed of light, and it just gets trapped in a circle, whether that is caused because there's a bar that forces it to, you know, or some other mechanism, some other physical mechanism. Um, but that the basically what takes place is is when when you convert photons, a free photon, to say the photon in an electron, you take away its frequency. So now the photons are right next to each other. Uh, there is no period between them. They're stuck together, so to speak. And that's why they tend to like follow each other. There's a bond between them. They bond in a way. And um, not strongly, but they're bound. And they are now capable of being managed, so to speak, or controlled by forces. And there are... Forces is the wrong word to use in this context because forces are other fish. <laughs> um, um, uh, they are... Um, no, it doesn't matter. You you get the idea. They can, they just set up the rule that a fish can get stuck on another fish's tail. That that's the nature of the fish. One of the rules of the fish, and then it's going to go wherever that fish goes. Yeah. All right. Electrons can absorb photons' energy, or they can exchange changes in angular momentum without transferring energy. So this angular momentum thing is important to understand. So that, my understanding of angular momentum just means the direction. You know, something has velocity and then it has direction, and that's basically angular momentum is the direction of the velocity. Um, what's taking place in most interactions is just exchanges in direction. Two things bang off of each other. There's no exchange of energy, no adding up, subtracting. The two things leave with what they had. They have just changed their directions. So most interactions between photons and electrons are likely to be just changes in angular momentum. The electron gets pushed in a direction and the photon leaves in a direction different than what they arrived at. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. And the to absorb energy means that a photon is absorbed. That means energy is a photon. So every time somebody says energy, that means there's got to be more photons. When something absorbs energy, turns energy into potential energy, that means it had to absorb photons. Photons are energy. So if you're losing photons, you're losing energy. If you're gaining photons, you're gaining energy. Uh, potential energy. And potential energy just means that you have trapped photons in some kind of mechanism, and you will release them, or can release them, um, at some future point. Um, <sighs> All right, so um, yeah, they say I just you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
so so I, I don't really want to get into the, the it's in the the video 20 the explanation of of uh, how you would absorb a photon but basically the idea is there's frequencies to the all the electromagnetic spectrum and say blue light comes in at twice the speed you know the quite twice the number it's a machine gun that's firing twice as fast okay so you have two machine guns let's say red light and blue light the blue light machine gun fires bullets twice as fast and what energy absorption would be like is the electron would take in those blue you know the fast coming bullets and it would shoot out the slower coming bullets so for every ten bullets that came in it would keep five and it would shoot out five and that would be basically blue light being converted to red light would be there would be an exchange in any period of time of fifty percent of the photons or the bullets yeah you know, you can get that right yeah you get that um, <laughs> so anyway um, but that's it. That's all electrons do. Electrons and photons. Uh, you know, I'm not written here because I can't say it for sure. But it's it's 99.99999 percent of all interaction in the universe. All this, everything we, all this action, is taking place between photons and electrons. That's the game. The universe kind of runs on photons interacting with electrons, and then electrons influencing the entire atom. Likely that's the way it's happening. Anyway, all right, here's the big one. Um, number five, the universe exerts an evenly distributed photonic pressure. Proportional to its mass, material objects can shield other material objects from that pressure and create gravitational attraction. So there really is no attraction. There's no, it's probably the word, I should put that in quotes because there is no such thing. It's all, it's a negative pressure, okay? Everything's pushed. So just as you thought intuitively, just as it feels, you're being pushed down, all right? There's, there, that's just the way it is, okay? There's no being pulled, you're being pushed. And you're being pushed by, it's probably, I would guess, a very low frequency photonic pressure, so it's something in the radio wave or below kind of spectrum, a, a mass of photons that the universe just drones, um, it's background radiation, but, you know, you could even blame something like the microwave radiation that is, you know, what they use to explain the Big Bang, you know, the residue from the Big Bang, but regardless, it doesn't matter, it's a ton of photons out there that don't have from the from the electron's perspective, a frequency. There, there are two. The, the frequency, their period between the bullets comes so rarely, uh, you know, but from their perspective, so lengthened that they don't recognize it coming from the same shooter, so to speak, or something like that. Um, and so they are able to have purely um, kinetic interactions with electrons, which means these would be the kind of interactions where there is no exchange. Of, of energy. There's no absorption of energy. So there's just a an exchange of angular momentum. So the photon comes into the big gravitational body and it pushes it essentially, changes the orientation of its electrons eccentric orbit, which I explain also in the video 20 on the Draft Science Channel. Um, that's the shape of the electron that's really dictating its, its Pac-Man nature. It's the nature of electrons to eat space in a direction. And if there's <coughs> any change in its shape, it will eat space in a direction, then it will actually move in that direction. So if it isn't perfectly round in its orbit, it, any eccentricity in its orbit will cause it to eat space in that direction. And which essentially is happening is this gravitational photon force is basically changing the orientation or the shape of the electron, which makes it eat it likes to eat. It's eating space in a direction, and so that's the your your matter. You're not, you know, technically, it, the pressure is just telling your own atoms, your own electrons, to move in a direction. And it's it's happening inside of you. You're doing it, and it's like if I was to push you into space, launch you into space, and you were to f just kind of move at a velocity I pushed you at. The fact that you continue to move in that direction is because your own matter is moving in that direction. There's nothing 
pushing you. Your own matter is oriented to eat space in that direction. Yeah, the, the electrons are pac-manning their way in the direction you're moving. Um, so again, it's angular momentum that's changed. So there's no energy transfer. That means there's no heat transfer. So to understand energy in another way, um, <clears throat> when an electron absorbs a photon, it gets bigger. As it gets bigger, that means it'll eat more space in, a, in the direction it's eating. So the Pac-Man gets bigger, it moves faster. And it's the speed of that movement that causes more heat in the material substance. So when one, one little swirl of the fish in a big giant school of swirling fish starts going faster, it's going to start making noise. It's going to start rubbing up against other fish. It's going to start knocking scales off, so to speak. It's going to cause trouble, and that's called that's what we recognize as heat. And heat is just a um, atomic friction, essentially. Yeah, that's a good enough way to put it. Um, in the sense that we see the infrared radiation thrown off, which is the scales of the fish. <laughs> so. Um, so anyway, gravity doesn't create any of that, because gravity, the photons that create gravity do not absorb photons. They just scatter them. So they take away angular momentum. The photons come in this way, say, they go through the substance, they're deflected in, by interaction, and they impart the angle, the pitch change in their direction is given to the thing they interacted with, meaning the electron now moves in the direction, more in the direction of the photon that has now been scattered. Really simple. So it's just an exchange of angular momentum, which requires no transfer of energy, which requires no creation of heat. So this is one of the arguments against this theory in the 1700s, and um, this is why there is no heat problem is it's just a ch an exchange of angular momentum. All right, um, and so now the big one, uh, where gravity is connected to uh, magnetism. So where Einstein failed, this theory succeeds in that, um, well, I'll read it, but um, like gravity, magnetic attraction and repulsion is created by variations in photonic pressure. With magnetism, the pressure is of two characteristic types, created inversely by the poles, and which causes changes in the angular momentum of the electrons in, and in turn the atoms. Something wrong with the way I spelled that again. Um, so what's happening in magnetism is a subtly different. So you have to understand that the where I said it was scattered before, it's not being scattered and now it's being converted. So there's a conversion of, say, a, a plus photon goes through the negative pole and is changed into a minus photon. Uh, a, a, a plus photon would go into the, the south pole and nothing would happen to it. It'd go right through. But if a minus photon goes through, it's changed into a plus photon. And the two are inversely attracted and repulsed by those photons. So it's like gravity doubled in terms of the attraction and gra and the opposite of gravity in terms of the repulsion but it's it's the same exact mechanism in the sense that there's no there's only a transfer of type and in the transfer of type there's a transfer of angular momentum so a you know the don't want to make it too complicated um, but depending on what pole of the magnet you're in, you will scatter photons of a particular type. And you, if you don't scatter it, you convert it into the opposite type photon, which the other magnet pole will scatter. So therefore you have an opposite field intensity thing. But it, the field is photons. The pressure is still photons. And, um, yeah, there's no energy transfer, there's just a transfer again of angular momentum of the direction of the internal structure the, where the uh, electrons are pointing. So think of all your atoms as being gyroscopes. You know, they, they, they can move in any direction in any second. They're just completely flexible. 
and it's only the pressure that comes in that balances them. That they're, they're just balanced by that pressure. And then any change in pressure will mean that they're distorted in a direction. They're, they're, they'll, they'll tend to want to move because of that change in pressure. But because they're atoms and they're sort of blocked by the molecular structure and they can't just move, um, you know, that's when heat's generated and all that stuff by an attempt to move in a direction. Um, well, I don't want to add to that. Um, but more specifically, it's the it's the electrons that are really doing the dragging of the atom in a direction. Probably. Mostly. Alright, um, so uh, conditional statement number seven is just connecting these two. In both gravity and magnetism, no energy is transferred as the only thing altered is angular momentum, the direction of pre-existing and pressure-regulated internal velocities. So these are already velocities that exist when, within you, your stuff already moving, and the only thing being changed is the direction of the movement. And you can change direction without any energy loss. So the fish are very active in a school, and it takes absolutely no more energy to just point them in a direction and then have the school move in that direction. It doesn't take more energy for the school to move in a direction. It just change, takes a change in the direction of each fish swimming. So instead of swimming in chaotic directions, if they all swim in one direction, they appear to display their energy then. Their energy is made apparent um, when they start moving in one direction. But when they're moving in all kinds of directions, their energy is disguised as what we call matter. The school. This is, this is just a school of photons. Matter is a school of photons. And uh, it only reveals itself as energy when it's moving coherently in one direction or more in one direction when more of it is moving in one direction um, when some percentage of it is moving in one direction then it begins to reveal itself as energy okay so anyway there are little bits and pieces um, I think there's a good phrase <laughs> photons do not see momentum that is, they don't see the momentum of my at my atoms, you know, my material form. They only see other photons. So when a fish comes at a school of fish, it doesn't see a school of fish. It only sees the fish it's going to interact with. So all it sees is fish moving 30 miles an hour. They, photons don't see anything else. Photons just see photons moving the speed of light. That's all they know. So there's no such thing as material momentum from a photon's point of view. Uh, they only see other photons moving the speed of light. So that's probably a, a keeper as a phrase. Uh, I just have to figure out how to where to put it. Um, so anyway, so there are fish and seawater. That's what it's all made out of. No bent space, no gravity wells, no Blah, 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 blah. No, it's fish and seawater. It doesn't even have to be seawater, it's just water. <laughs> but anyway, um, then that's all there is. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, so I'm a month into this and I haven't really gotten anywhere yet. 50 views on the videos, I mean, it's just not good enough. You know, I have to provoke some sort of challenge. And the challenges so far have just been you know, give me mathematics, well, you know, uh, a lot of the mathematics that's been done is correct, but a lot of it's just crap. I mean, I'm sorry, I can't give you mathematics for some God theory, I mean, based on premises that aren't real, about theoretical space that doesn't exist. I mean, I really can't give you mathematics about theoretical space that doesn't exist. Uh, I can't explain phenomenon. That I can do, but I can't and I explain why an experiment, uh, why their conclusions regarding an experiment are wrong. But I can't undo bad math about theoretical space that doesn't exist. That's like disproving God. I can't do that. Uh, I can only make a logical statement that there's a more reasonable explanation. 
and this is the more reasonable explanation. Yeah. So anyway, till next time.